Welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures each and every day from the Impact Power Sports Studio. Here we are. The timing a little bit better today. I got off to a uh, little bit of a rocky start yesterday. I, it, it's amazing. I was winding down the radio show and I go, you know, you've done nothing to prepare for the historically award-winning Eric Zane Show podcast. You haven't let the dogs out easy. You haven't uh, done your usual preparations. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, how do you, how do you, you got to get your shit together. So I got it done today and I'm like, all right, this is cool. This, this I should be able to do is uh, pretty close to a non-time start. It's still a couple minutes late. But I realized as I was starting to get this rolling that I hadn't brushed my hair. And, um, well, that's probably the most important thing that we can be dealing with is my hair. Now, fresh off of a night last night over at the world-famous Bosco's Pub, I had to be called in from the bullpen to flip burgers and make french fries. I mentioned to you that my pal Doug, who is the owner-operator of Bosco's Pub, family-run business, uh, had badly injured himself. He fell down the steps on Friday night, and I got the lowdown of how this unfolded. Now, Doug's a big dude. Doug's about an inch taller than me, maybe 5'9", maybe 5'10", somewhere around there. But he, he weighs 225 pounds. His body fat is ridiculously low. His waist is like this big. His upper body's this big. He's jacked. He is built like a brick shit house. However, he's not nearly as nimble as your old pal EZ because of uh, a couple of uh, hip replacements. It still pumps iron like a son of a bitch, though. This doesn't really have anything to do with it, I don't think. It's just he got tripped. He was at the top of his steps, and his dog, Dozer, apparently, uh, took him out. From what I hear, Dee Dee, his lovely and talented, beautiful wife, she was uh, in bed, and then she heard... Boom, 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 boom. And she's like, what the fuck? This is after Doug got home from work Friday night. And she said that, and she's telling me that she was, I thought Doug was locked out and was pounding on the door to get in. So um, she goes down and no Doug. And uh, and b- by the way, Rebecca says, it sounds like Doug's top heavy. He, yeah, yeah, that that's a good way to describe it. But he doesn't skip leg day. Okay, but his upper body is quite large, you know. Uh, so she goes looking for Doug. That let him in. No, I'm, I don't know where the fuck fuck he is. And then she notices that the light to the basement is on. And then she goes in t- at the top of the steps, and there's Doug laying at the bottom of the steps, all fucked up. He's out. He's unconscious. She goes down there, and. Uh, he starts to come around and I'm gonna call nine one one, and uh, he goes, oh, "Hang on a second, hang on a second. So uh, then uh, she she puts his, her hand on his head, and he's bleeding badly from the head. He ended up getting several staples when they were putting him back together, but he had he bled a lot. It's a damn good thing she showed up. Um. They take him to the first. He's, he's thinking about not going to the hospital. You know, he's one of those guys. And he stands up and he almost falls down. Stevie says, "Doug from Bosco's." Yes, this is this is what happened to Doug. And um, ambulance. Uh, you know, at this point, they've called the ambulance. The ambulance shows up, paramedics, fire, all that deal. They um, take him to the hospital. They have to do a. Um, a CAT scan on his head, make sure that he's not bleeding on his brain. While that's going on, he's got a hematoma on his head. Have you ever seen a hematoma? You know, like when it's bleeding under the skin 
and it's it's like a big lump. He's got one of those. Awful. Really, really messed up bad. He's going to be okay, but it, it might take a while. He has a traumatic brain injury. Okay, basically a, a incredibly large concussion he has suffered. He's back home. He's doing okay. Uh, if he can, go to Bosco's to pay for co-pays. Help out the folks at Bosco's and buy their food and have a couple of drinks. I haven't heard yet if I'm going to be back there today. I said to him, I go, look, uh, let me know. Junior, which is Dougie. Doug's the big dog. Then there's Dougie. And then there's D3. That's the little one. That's Doug's grandson, Dougie's son. I worked with Dougie yesterday. And um, hang on, I got to tell, I got to text Dougie. Do you mind if I tell that story about the bathroom incident or should I hold off? Question mark. When I say tell the story, I mean on the podcast, period. Up to you, period. No problem if you don't want me to, period. Uh, so I text him. I go, hey, buddy, am I going to be there today working? He goes, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. My dad will. um, Because Doug's like, I might work today. He's that type. You know, uh, yesterday I get into the, uh, place and, and something has happened. There's been an incident at Bosco's that has taken place and I'm trying to get the okay from Dougie to tell the story. Okay. I'm on it. Dougie's walking around the restaurant. And um, I notice, I, I go out to get a drink of water, and he's talking to a lady. Hold on, I'm about to tell it. Hey, buddy, dot, dot, dot. I'm on Facebook telling the story right now, period. Check out my page. Give him a second to get there. He's going to love this. Because he writes, hell yes, tell this story, run with it. Um, before I get to that on the radio today, after all we've been through with our pal, Kenny, letting us know that, Hey, it's my birthday. I see on my little promotional log because there's things you have to do. So one of the things that I saw was that BC pizza has sponsored, uh, today's birthdays. And so you read the script and it says, all right, BC pizza, love them so much. 29 locations in Michigan. They are awesome. Big sponsor of the show and the BC birthday club. And people go to the website and they put their birthdays in and then they get to hear them named on the radio. Now it just so happens that on the birthday list for March 21 in the audience, 25 of the audience members are celebrating a birthday on March 21. That's unbelievable. I, I thought that that was quite high. Uh, not only, um, I'm sure there's even more, but th these are the ones who've signed up. They signed themselves up. So there I am. I'm reading the, uh, the, the, oh, there's a uh, John and Mayo. He turned 65. Happy birthday, buddy. You know, this is all uh, very basic stuff. And in my, and in a way I start, I, I pictured Kenny. Now, it just so happens that he's listening online on the Q100 Michigan app. And uh, so all the way in Tennessee, he hears me say, oh, and uh, this is going out to Kenny. Kenny had a birthday last. I, I said something sideways that made him laugh. He says, you had to wish people happy birthday, and I couldn't stop laughing. But then I was also sad. <laughs> Oh. And uh, Rebecca announces her birthday, ladies and gentlemen. Rebecca's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Let me get a drink of this coffee. And then I got to tell the story about Bosco's yesterday and the world famous Bosco's bathroom incident. This is a story of the, the moral of the story is entitling parents and how they cripple their children 
with how they teach them to be entitled. This is ridiculous. I walk out of the kitchen to get a drink of water. Dougie is out there talking to a, a, a little lady. She's very tiny. And um, two young people behind her. And so it looked like mom and kids. I don't know the context. I don't know what's going on. I looked at her for maybe one second. But I remember to myself, I actually thought to myself, wow, she looks kind of cunty. She's got a very cunty look on her face. I turn around and I walk back. A few minutes later, Dougie goes, did you hear about the bathroom incident the other night? I go, no. And he's got a check in his hand. He goes, yeah, this, this $3,000 check has to do with what I'm about to tell you. I don't know where he got the check. I have not yet connected the cunty faced woman and her two brats that were with her to the bathroom incident or to the check, but they're all connected. Cunt face, bratty kids, $3,000 bathroom incident. I am simply going to tell you how the story was relayed to me. Um, not that long ago, maybe a week ago or so, it was on a Friday or Saturday. Typical dinner service. And uh, when you're in the kitchen, every time the door opens and closes that there's a new customer, it gives you, there's a, a sound effect that plays of a dog barking. Roof, roof. Look at, Darla just heard that. Roof, roof, roof. <laughs> <laughs> so the boys are in the back cooking and, and they're hearing all this commotion. Typically it doesn't. So they're wondering, why is that door keep opening and closing? And then uh, it, they come to find out that there is a table where it turns out these two boys um, who walked in with cunt face are going in and out of the place, back and forth. And uh, they're kind of making a ruckus as that's happening. Like people are getting bumped into and uh, a lot of other customers are noticing and um, something's happening. No one's really sure what. Cut to the end of the story or the end of their uh, dining experience. And uh, Cunty is not with them. It's just young people. It's these two and some other young people. We're talking like um, high school or maybe a year out of high school. One of the two fucking brats, as they're walking out, turns around to face the dining room. It's packed and screams at the top of his lungs. So people right away are like, what the fuck? They're waiting to hear like Allah Akbar and the place to blow up or something. But there, there were typical Hudsonville white, pe- white people. Couldn't have been that stupid. And then the guy walks out. And they're like, what the fuck is going on here? So Dougie happens to go into the bathroom after this. And the bathroom is trashed. All of the uh, stuff in the soap dispensers has been um, like put into hands and wiped all over the windows or the, the mirrors. All the papers ripped out of the thing. Uh, the doors are all fucked up. You know the uh, stainless doors that make the stalls? They've been damaged. They've managed to dent the doors somehow. I don't know what the fuck they were doing to do that. Um, but the ba- the bathroom's all fucked up. And so, you know, Dougie's trying to figure out what's going on. And uh, one of these servers noticed, re- uh, realized she recognized one of the boys there as someone she went to high school with. So through a little cross-referencing and detective work and running the name on the card to pay for the food, they were able to get a name. And so what do you do then? You go to Facebook. And uh, so you search the name and the community, and it turns out that the first one that they saw was actually the father of these little cocks, of one of these little assholes. 
So, um, communication through Facebook and quick introduction. Um, actually, I take it back. The guy on Facebook was a father of a young lady that was with them. Okay. I, I fucked that up. Anyway, um, Hey, was your daughter at Bosco's pub? Yes. Oh, okay. So then the background is quickly given. And then the girl with the father communicates with the girl before long, there's a phone call conversation happening and the girl immediately gives up rats out these two fuckers. Uh, Chris says they paid with a card too. future Mensa members for sure. No, I, well, actually kind of like that little change in the story. The girl paid for the food, but that's close enough of a relation. We can get names. Sure enough, she's quick to offer the names. And um, by the end of the hour, there's a conversation between Doug and the parents of the kid respond of the kids responsible. Cops are there. There's some conversations about. Uh, what to do going forward. And then the idea is floated about um, since Dougie had to clean the bathroom in order to be made whole, these two fuckers needs to help do work at Bosco's. And so it just so happens that it's time to get the patio furniture from downstairs. And that's a bitch of a job. So these two have to do the job. And they agreed to it. They, they agreed to do go downstairs and under supervision uh, do this. And um, all right, so that, that ends. The cops, uh, it was all kind of weird how they handled it. And I, I think that if they, um, if they just agree to that, and um, because the building is not Bosco's, it's actually a government building. It's owned by the community. Oops, sorry, O'Neill. So next thing I know, Dougie's telling me this story and that then fast forward to this woman showing up. Now she is there so that the kids can say sorry and apologize for this. And it just so happens that Doug is not there yesterday because he's recovering from injury. But Cunty doesn't know that. And as she has communicated with Doug, I guess there was an agreement that they would come in. Well, it got got fucked up. Doug hasn't thought of anything in the last several days, let alone having to deal with this shit. So she shows up there with these fucking rats, these kids, and Doug's not there. And this bitch immediately gets a fucking attitude with Dougie. And that's what I saw. Because when I told you I saw her, that chick's got kind of a cunty look on her face. It's true. She did. And, um, she was given Doug sass, Dougie sass about Doug not being there. Dougie did not say, well, my dad was badly hurt or anything like that, which I kind of wished he would have, cause that would have made her fucking feel bad. Maybe, but he could feel it. He could sense that this chick was not having any of it for some reason. And she was, like standoffish because of the fact that Doug wasn't there and that this is all happening. And, um, I'm, uh, I, Dougie's th- trying to hold back and wants to say, God damn it. I don't want to be here either, but your fucking idiot kids did all this shit. Um, can you imagine if you're someone my age and when you were a kid, you did something like that, what your parents would do to you? You know, the last thing my parents would do would be give me a ride back to the place to sort this out. They'd say, fucking walk, get a ride yourself, handle this yourself. So the fact that, um, this bitch is crippling the kids. You can tell just by her attitude and that she drove them there. Stevie says, did he tell them to never come back? Cause I would have, I said to Dougie, I go, buddy, I don't know if I like the idea of you and those kids working together. Um, you should have other people there to witness this because these two are probably going to try to pull a fucking fast one. And then the mom gives Dougie a $3,000 check 
to pay for the doors, to replace the doors that are in the stalls. Those are expensive, the stainless steel doors. She, she gives him a $3,000 check, which I don't know if he knew that was even supposed to happen in the first place, but she does. And that also makes me think she's completely enabling the kids, making them, or that she's paying the money. I don't know, maybe they're paying her back. But the whole thing is fucked up. What the hell is wrong with those goddamn kids in the first place for doing that? It would, I take it back. When I was a kid, I did stupid shit too. And I think that that's what could have come out in the conversation. Hey, you're a kid. You're going to do dumb shit like this. And then you're going to learn something because you're going to learn the ramifications, uh, for doing something like that. But, um, I'll be goddamn if the mom is going to have an attitude. I think the bigger problem here is cunty mom than the two dudes. All right. I think the two dudes are probably like that because of cunty mom. Chris says, yes, we all do or did stupid shit, but the outcome would have been different. So anyway, I just thought that was incredible how that all unfolded. And the, uh, the idea that um, I walk out and I don't know this scenario. And I just took one look at her face and I was like, what's happening right here? Something's going on in that little space. My God. Kenny writes, I had a call and I missed what the kids did. They effed up the stalls in the bathroom. Yeah, pretty much. They they trashed the bathroom for some reason. Uh, and then the mom appeared to be the bigger problem by giving Dougie sass, you know? Yeah, excuse Doug for not being there. Not everything works out. Don't forget, you wouldn't be in this spot if your butt-fuck kids weren't acting like assholes, you fucking moron. Unbelievable. Thank you, Dougie, for letting me tell that amazing story. Jesus Christ. Never a dull moment. All these, all these folks want to do, okay? All they want to do is make hamburgers and French fries and let and get poor people a, uh, an affordable drink to watch the goddamn game. And you got asshole uh, Nutsonville kids doing this with cunty mom giving local business owner and pillar of the community pillars of the community the Furness family sass shut the fuck up and go to another restaurant you dumbass god damn uh nick writes i used to help at the old orbit room we had a toilet ripped off the wall before oh no Megan says, boys do stupid shit when two or more of them get together. Oh, my God, yes. You sound like a mother who's, like, raised 10 kids. That is so true. God damn. Isn't that weird being a parent? All the shit you got to put up with. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, thanks again for enjoying the show on Facebook. X and YouTube. But it's time for you to go. Get the rest of the show on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Or, or you can download the Twitch app and search Eric Zane Live. And you're going to want to because I just got into like a juicy bit of conversation with the multi-talented Justin Nettlebeck. You remember Justin from the No Please podcast and, of course, the Free Beer and Hot Wings show. Um, Justin made a post on Facebook. Ryan describes him as wet, puthy, uh, puthy, wet pussy mouth Justin. Uh-huh. Yeah, him. So I will uh, share those screenshots with you in a moment. After I kick these folks out. 
But anyway, check it out. Uh, check me out on Twitch if you want the rest of the show. Also, the audio podcast is heard wherever you download podcasts. Just search Eric Zane Show Podcast. And then on Patreon, where Saturday we've got a big fraud Saturday. Uh, we'll be starting late morning, early afternoon. Haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, for another edition of Who Are These Zanes? And then we will turn our attention to the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. So there you go. Thank you again for being part of the show on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. The open and live stream, I take that back. If you want to reach out to me on email, uh, do it on the Shoreliner Striping inbox, eric at ericzaneshow.com. The accounting sponsor of the Eric Zane Show podcast is Tag Accounting. He does both the personal return and the business return. Anything that you need done when it comes to accounting, Tag Accounting has you covered. He even does my uh, payroll for the Eric Zane Show podcast. You're like, what? Huh? Well, yeah. Um, he set me up with what's known as an S Corp company like mine one employee and he does the books and every two weeks he sends me a paycheck with all of my taxes taken out of it and whatnot social security and federal tax and state tax and local tax and all that shit and uh that's how we do it it's a uh, it's an easier way to do business when it comes to paying taxes at the end of the year of course it doesn't help when at the end of the year he sees that i took out a ton of cash out of retirement to pay for education uh, beyond my control, which sucks because then it raises the tax bracket and I have to pay back all of my healthcare.gov tax premiums or tax. Um, what do you call it? What do you call those things? Tax uh, I don't know, subsidies. I don't know. Anyway, that's why I pay have to pay $20,000 in taxes. God damn it. Anyway, Tag Accounting, online at tagcpa.net, 616-301-9516. That's 616-301-9516. Uh, nothing as elaborate as what I just talked about, but your personal return is something that can be a uh, cause of great anxiety. Have Troy take care of it for you. Tagcpa.net, 616-301-9516. And that's for anywhere in the U.S. Good anywhere. You can upload all your documents. He'll do your taxes for you. Same thing with um, my health care insurance person. That would be Frank Fuss from MyPolicyShop.com. When it comes to health care, getting it through healthcare.gov, perhaps purchasing a life insurance policy, perhaps you need help on with Medicare, Frank Fuss can help you. All you need to do is set up some time with him via the phone or zoom or cup of coffee doesn't matter to do that you go to buy insurance here.com b-u-y insurance here.com for any help with frank fuss from frank fuss who'll help you get in your uh, life insurance policy or like i said maybe through healthcare.gov frank can help with all of that buy insurance here.com basketball next thursday with the grand rapids gold want to see you there grand rapids gold.com is the website where you get tickets. Two games left. Thursday, $2 beers, $2 dogs. I'll see you at the Grand Rapids Gold basketball game. The future of the NBA goes through Grand Rapids as the Grand Rapids Gold are the G League affiliate for the Denver Nuggets. And boy, do they put on a great show between what goes on on the court and off the court. I love it. And uh, you get to hang out with me too. GrandRapidsGold.com for tickets. Okay, before I tell you this story about my interaction with uh, Justin Nettlebeck, Justin from Free Beer and Hot Wings. I need you to sit tight because your old pal EZ has to go tinkle. The Eric Zane Show podcast is powered by the Eufy Video Smart Lock E330. This thing's amazing. These people sent me one and I'm so happy. I love it so much. It's a lock. It's a 2K camera. It's a doorbell. Three in one. 
triple security. You know, a lot of the times when you buy something that's like a camera so you can see who's at your door, you're going to have to pay a monthly fee. That is not the case with the Eufy Video Smart Lock E330. And by the way, I want you to search E-U-F-Y Video Lock. That's E-U-F-Y Video Lock. Or visit eufyofficial.com slash video lock to see how you can gain complete control of your door. The Eufy Video Lock is easy to install, set up with just a Phillips screwdriver, no drilling required. Thank goodness, because if I did that, there'd be holes all over the place. It'd be horrible. Keyless entry, no more fumbling for the keys when your hands are full. Never worry about the kids losing keys or passing among the renters. One second unlocking with, get this, AI self-learning chip embedded. The more you use it, the more accurate it will be. It's fingerprint recognition on this thing. You got to try this out. Search Eufy Video Lock. That's E-U-F-Y Video Lock. Or go to eufyofficial.com slash video lock. Full three-in-one triple security with Eufy. I will be back. One of you um, pointed out to me that old Justin... Uh, posted on Facebook. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, this dude uh, showed up on uh, the Freeburn Hot Wings show years ago and um, was quite polarizing. A lot of dissatisfied customers. He kind of was square peg round hole there. I don't, I don't know exactly what went on. I can only speculate. But... He ends up leaving and goes to Chicago. And then the next thing you know, he's not in Chicago. And then the next thing you know, his boss, my close friend, Troy Hansen, is fired. Troy hired Justin. I'm already getting ahead of myself on the story. Troy hired Justin in Chicago to be on the morning show. I'm going to gloss over most things on this in order to stay focused on the story. The next thing you know, Justin's out. And then a week later, Troy's out. What's going on? Time passes. Justin sues Cumulus. The lawsuit's online somewhere. I don't have it in front of me. I read it. Uh, But Justin is suing for a number of things that are specified in it. A lot of it has to do with things that he witnessed, whether heard or or seen, through Troy Hansen. He makes a lot of allegations of not-so-great things. Uh, Poor treatment. And uh, him basically suggesting harassment. And his claim is that he told the radio company of this and they did nothing. And eventually that led to him not working at the radio station anymore. And so he is suing Cumulus. He's not suing Troy, but Troy is a uh, center point in the lawsuit after Justin's allegation. Remains to be seen what's going to happen there. All right. So who knows? Now, I have an opinion on it. It doesn't matter. Um, But let me cut to this portion. Because Justin, well, he's an idiot, first of all. And uh, anybody who knows Justin probably feels the same way. But we on this show, after... He left uh, uh, the Chicago radio station. He started doing a podcast, which was perfect for us. So we, uh, we, Ben and I would review it. And uh, who are these Justins? We only did like two or three episodes because he gave up on the podcast after like a month. And uh, it was, <laughs> we reviewed the No Please podcast on uh, who are these podcasts. And I, I'll say this, that reviewing that, it was very, very bad. And I'm sure he knows it. But... I didn't go into that like, hey, I hate Justin. 
I went into that like, hey, let's review a shitty podcast. In fact, um, I reached out to him more than once as we were getting started. and said, hey, you should be on our show. We can review your show and it will we'll get a lot more people to pay attention to it. And you know, if you lean into the roasting that we're going to do, it'll probably help you. He wasn't interested. I've never spoken to him till today. Today, he posts on Facebook this. Hey, friends. It's been a long time. I have an exciting life update. Love. Now, here's the line that gets me. As I continue to fight for my right to work in radio. Well, that's not what you're doing. You're not fighting for your right to work in radio. Um, you are suing over alleged harassment. I don't, that doesn't have anything to do with your right to work in radio. No one's taken your right to work in radio away. The only thing that's keeping you from working in the, on the radio is the quality of what you do on the radio which in my opinion is shit. I've decided to move back to Washington to help my dad with his roofing company. That's a great decision. Actually, that is a great decision. Stay there. And he goes this route. God works in crazy ways, and I never thought this would be my life, but I feel extremely blessed to be in a position to help my old man. Okay, great. Thank you for your nonstop support. I see you and I feel you. As soon as I... As soon as I can... As soon as I can, I will be podcasting again. But until... <laughs> Remember the laughs? <laughs> but until then, I'll be selling roofs. It's been almost a year since I was granted the opportunity to talk on a mic. And I miss it. And you all every day. Why aren't you doing your podcast? Who gives a shit if you're suing somebody? Do a fucking podcast. Your podcast doesn't have anything to do with a lawsuit, asshole. When one door closes, sometimes you have to grab a rock and break a window. Thank, <laughs> Thank goodness summer is around the corner because I'm breaking all the windows. Uh, he again, thanks the audience, blah, 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 blah. I've struggled with not being able to tell you the truth about what's going on with radio. But now that the case is public, I hope you understand why I have been so silent. Um, dude, if you're suing a radio company, you can still get on there and talk about, uh, whatever. Where's Kate? The Super Bowl, anything. You can do anything you want. Anyway, um, I live in Washington, whatever, buy a roof from these people. So I'm like, you know, so I wrote this. Justin, what do you mean by, quote, fighting for your right to work in radio? What is keeping you from working? I read your lawsuit and it had more to do with how you allege you were treated in the workplace. Can you explain this? Now, anything I say is going to be taken poorly. We all can agree with that. So I understand why he would be uh, on the defensive. But I think that's a pretty fair question, don't you? What's keeping you from working on the radio? Go work for, there's a billion radio companies. He writes back, and this is the first time we've ever spoken. Eric, you've been in many lawsuits, he writes. By the way, I've never been in a lawsuit ever in my life. I've never been sued. You know what I can and can't explain. Well, yeah, I do. Um, per, I, know, I know everything there is to know about that case. I know it from what you allege. And from talking to people involved with that case. I know plenty about your case. But again, why 
are you suggesting you can't work in radio and you're fighting for your right to work in radio? I'm telling you, Justin, the fact that everybody knows what you do when you leave the workplace and will be well aware of your behavior in the workplace when the details come out in, um, uh, what do they call it in a lawsuit? Discovery. It's going to come out in discovery what you were like to work with. If you being horrible wasn't keeping you from being on the radio or was keeping you from being on the radio, what they find out in discovery is going to even further that. So on another level, you will never work at a radio station ever again because all they're going to need to do is search your name and realize, oh, this happened. Eric, you've been in many lawsuits. You know what I can and can't explain. Stop being a predatory ambulance chaser. I don't get the reference. Wouldn't that indicate that I'm like a lawyer chasing an ambulance? I think that's you. So he says, I've been in many lawsuits. Stop being a predatory ambulance chaser. And then he goes around of do better, man. We've never met, but you've said many horrible things about me. I've always shown you respect. Well, no, this is the first time we've communicated. You've never said anything about me. You've never, you've never shown me disrespect or respect. So don't pat yourself on the back, you little fuck. I'm going to leave it that way. I'm praying for you, man. No, thanks. I hope you let go of the crap weighing you down and find happiness. Love you. Oh, you piece of shit. I wrote, Justin, I've not been in one lawsuit. All I'm suggesting is that your lawsuit has nothing to do with you, quote, fighting for your right to work. Nobody is preventing that. So don't gaslight your audience with nonsense like that. Do better, Justin. You know nothing about me. I know plenty about you. I really don't. I I, sh- I shouldn't even have said that. All I know about Justin. No, I take it back. I do know quite a bit about Justin. Um, But what a fucking little twat. Do better, man. Uh, I would. Ugh, fuck. I can't stand that little prick. So I, I see through all that love and happiness bullshit that you do, Justin. I know, I know more about you than you think, you little fucker. And I know you're watching this right now. You need this shit smacked out of you is what you need. God damn it. Probably going to sue me too, you little twat. Fuck you. Chris says there must be a nationwide non-compete in place for the great Justin pussy mouth. And by the way, dude, if you ever do a podcast again, since you over edit the shit out of those things, edit out all the, all the wet lip cracking, all the cotton mouth smacking better yet. Stay away from microphones and stick to roofs. Some people just are not meant to be in radio, okay? And the fact that you somehow managed to trick not one, but two entities. All right? Uh, I I shouldn't say that. You didn't sue Freebird and Owings. The fact that you aced the interview with Freebird and Owings and you aced the interview with Cumulus in Chicago is beyond me. I don't know how you managed to do that. I think you're one of those uh, face changers who... Uh, does well in the interview, and then when it comes down to actually doing the job, it doesn't the what is provided doesn't uh, match up with the interview. You know, Ryan says no need to get sued when you have a wonderful disclaimer. The Eric Zane Show podcast would like to remind you that this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, places, and incidents. Either are products of Eric Zane's imagination or are used fictitiously. Any resemblance to actual events, locales, or persons, living or dead, is entirely coincidental. Uh, Tyler says, I really hate those phony spread peace and love fucks. Yeah, fuck you. Not you, Tyler. Fuck him. Uh, Kyle says, exactly. Quote, looking for a job. Oh, yeah, I am suing my former employer. Oh, so you're a problem. Pass. 
Ryan says predatory ambulance chaser. What does that even mean? Ryan says fucking big fraud Zane. You're hitting deep questions. Susan Samples would be proud. So that's a total de- a total deflection by Justin. Ryan says the edited in laugh track was horrendous on the No Please podcast. Drop between his wet pussy mouth noises. I recall editing easy in a similar fashion for fun to showcase the dumb assery that that meme art was doing. Linda said the laugh, the laughs killed my soul. Tyler says, oh my God, the laughs. So that's what's going on with our pal, Justin. What an embarrassment. David in Hudsonville says Justin is worse than Kelly. Okay. No one's worse than Justin. And Kelly is the best part of that show. I've said that before. I do not understand the dislike for Kelly. That show is hopelessly lost. But if it has anything, any bright spot, it's Kelly. Despite the weird R's. Um, she's the only one that does anything that's, uh, that's, that's fun on there. By the way, I see on the Reddit page again. God damn it. This always happens. Whenever somebody... I don't know how it happens. It's, it's fucking amazing. The Freebird Hot Wings Reddit page... I always get sucked into these goddamn conversations. Somebody wasn't happy with a segment yesterday. And they were having a conversation about that guy who made those Nickelodeon shows. And there's a document. It was a very popular documentary about the guy and how um, it was very creepy. And he treated the kids bad. And he was an asshole to work for. His name is Dan Schneider. Well, they had a discussion on their show about it. And I listened to the discussion. It actually wasn't bad. It was it was pretty interesting. I didn't know anything about it. It wasn't funny, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, not everything has to be funny on the fucking radio. But somebody got pissed off on their subreddit and was attacking the show because that wasn't a funny conversation, which is a a weird thing to um to be pissed off about. But people start bitching about it. And then, so there's a fight on their Reddit page about the content. Like the one guy is saying, I I can't, I come here for comedy and this isn't comedy. And then everybody else starts yelling at him and says, yeah, you know, that's, that's bullshit. You know, I, I liked it. And again, for the record, I listened to it and I thought it was fine. And, uh, this person who's known as free, (laughs) free beers hair wrote, what was it about? I missed it. And the original poster wrote, it was a daily dose of Kelly and Maitland preaching their wokeness. Now, at that point, I hadn't heard it, but I listened to it, and it it was nothing like that. It was just a normal conversation. So there's a lot of back and forth. And then, it fucking gets off the rails. Because the guy known as Freebeer's Hair... What did he write? Um, My favorite... Okay, the original poster writes, my favorite thing they used to do is play in a new story and just crack jokes. I feel like they never do it anymore, at least as well as back then. Somebody else weighs in and says, yeah, I agree with that. And this other guy says, yeah, I agree with that. And then Freebeer's Hair writes, the amount of games they play on a daily basis is ridiculous. This person writes, yeah, what up, Zane? And Freebeer's hair writes, LOL, as if I've not heard that before. And then they're all, then it turns into everybody thinks it's fucking me. It never gets old. You still live in the dream, Zane, the dream that ended in 2016. You're like a 24 year old. I am I have nothing to do with this goddamn thread. I cannot post on this fucking Reddit thread. I'm banned. I know you're talking about like, yeah, anybody can make an account. No, that's fucking stupid. I, I don't go there. 
This person writes, Freebird's hair writes, this is not Eric, but I think he's been doing well. I mean, come on. Can you make your living off a podcast plus? So this person's like supporting me, which does nothing but make these people think more that it's me. So I'm like, oh, fuck, stop. Don't ever do that. So now they're all lining up to rip me a new asshole. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So I guess my point is, if by chance somebody is listening to this show who goes there and says something nice about me, don't. Don't do it. Because they all think it's fucking me. God damn. Cole writes, Freebird Notwings was way better overall with Justin than with Kelly. Oh, I can't agree with that. Justin's a twat. Cole says maybe Freebeer's hair is Justin. Um, I think that whoever the Freebeer's hair character is, is someone who regularly comes here and just goes over there for gossip, which I'm here for. I love the gossip. Uh, speaking of gossip, Kyle from a company that used to market on this podcast will join us in a moment for the latest gossip, I guess. Before I bring him in, though, uh, make sure you check out my Vouch store, vouch.store slash Eric Zane. You can buy your coffee there. You can get your oral hygiene products, your toothbrush there. You can get your uh, pulverizing massager there. You can get your pet supplies there. The yak sticks are a big hit. Um, you can get your camp craft cocktails. You'll love those. Try the camp craft cocktails, buy them and, uh, add them to your favorite adult beverage, your favorite adult, um, liquor, if you will, gin, rum, you name it. And let me know how it goes. That is, um, vouch.store slash Eric Zane. Thank you to impact power sports online at impact power sports, mi.com. In Rockford, Michigan, they have a wide selection of ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, side by side. Some of those are the same thing I know. Electric bikes, Yamaha golf carts, motorcycles. Michigan's newest distributor of Yamaha golf carts, which are the best in the business. Uh, you need long cutting equipment. Perhaps you have a landscaping business and you need new equipment for your landscaping. They have that too. Plus a full service shop. Full service uh, facility there at Impact Power Sports online at impactpowersportsmi.com. Okay. Uh, you're like, easy, what are you doing? Yeah, I know. I thought I was prepared for this, but I'm obviously not. It's time to bring in Kyle. From Dumpster Divers. See what he has to say about things going on in the world. I still haven't yet gotten to that story, and perhaps I'll do this with Kyle, of Detroit Lions defensive back Cam Sutton. My God. He's a fugitive from the law. Hello, Eric Zane. Eric Zane. Hey, how are you, buddy? <laughs> Were you just doing your impression of me right as I was answering? <laughs> hello, hello, Eric Zane. Uh, Zane. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So did you hear that story about Cam Sutton of the Detroit Lions? Yeah, dude, I fucking heard. I, has, has there been any updates since then, do you know? Or is it still that they're just looking for his ass? Well, an hour ago I checked, and they, they're still looking for his ass. Yeah, that's that's crazy, dude. I, I, I mean, I'm curious about what's going to happen. If they're going to if they're going to bust his ass, I think we're allowed to just like release his ass with yeah. no problems. The Lions are happy that he he beat up his girlfriend. Dude, I know. Yeah, I mean, he struggled last year a little bit. We'll say. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, I mean, if, if we're gonna if we're able to get out of the contract, we might as well go sign somebody fucking sweet. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Sorry, I was just drinking some water. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is uh, that is, and, and by the way, Ryan writes With all the fancy tech upgrades Q100 did You're still hooking up a mic on a speakerphone LOL 
I just found new content for another easy Reddit story. That is true, Ryan. That is true, Ryan. However, however, that is uh, temporary. I actually will be running the phone through my new console. Thank you very much for that. Oh, shit, dude. You got a fucking console, dude? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm upgrading the equipment for the radio show, which, which you already know about that. Yeah, hell yeah. How's, that, how's it been going, dude? This is our first 11 a.m. time, dude. Oh, uh, it's wonderful. In fact, you should listen to it because there's got to be a song that you haven't heard on the radio that I could play for you. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I, I'll fucking send you a request, dude, because one of my, one of my, that's what I fucking don't like about the radio. Like, is you just hear basically like the same songs all the time. So how, if you can play some deep cuts, baby, then I'm in. Most of what I play, I've never heard of. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I've, I'm hearing it for the first time on the radio. It's very entertaining It uh, because they, uh, we actually do play requests. I've never worked at a radio station that actually does that. For some reason, we would always say, hey, call with a request. And then they would call. You pick it up. They say, yeah, play this. And then you go, yeah, I'll get it right on. And then you hang up and go, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. <laughs> yeah, Q100, we don't do that. That is, that's, that's how the whole broadcast day works. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That, no, I like that, dude. Yeah, that is, uh, that is certain. I mean, even when I look at some of the requests, I'm like, I have to resist the urge to say, fuck that shit. I'm not playing that. Uh, do you, when you receive these requests from these people, do you receive it from them? Like, on, can you hear the, the, their voice like on the radio? Um, the ones I've done so far are via the text line only. Um, okay. But I will be um, doing it where, but I, I do put the phones on forward and I talk to them. But I don't record those, but I will be once I get my phone set up that I was just talking about. Oh, that'd be sick, dude. I'm calling, dude. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Then you can get on the radio and we can play your songs. And uh, that's kind of what this radio station uh, is all about is that type of thing. It's um, it's not owned by a corporation. You know, it's it's two, yeah, hell yeah. It's a husband and wife who wanted to own a radio station. So there they are. Fuck yeah. Here's what, here's what I'm going to do. This will be my shtick, Eric Zane. I'm going to call you and request music. And then right at the end, like on every single call, I'm going to really loudly like say, all right, let's talk pussy. But like right when I hit the P, you got to hang up the phone. So like every time they just hear, all right, I'm going to talk. And then that's it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, 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 no, I'm not going to do that. I would, I'm lying. I, would, I would be so blue balled. I would be so because I, I'd, want to. <laughs> I'd, I'd want you to say it and then I'd get fired and. Yeah, no, I don't want you to get fired. No way. <laughs> uh, Chris writes, did your Q100 sign fall, Eric? Yes, it did. I got to hang it back up. I'm glad. It's interesting that you noticed it. It just happened before we started. Um, all right, so Cam Sutton's on the loose. He's probably going to get killed. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, and he's been missing since March 7th. Oh, he has? Yeah, that, the incident happened March 7th, and they just put out the uh, 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 bulletin on him like yesterday but yeah that guy sucks he, I mean, I he beats the, the shit the, out of women and, and and this is all happening i know i was i was i the you know me like whenever like a serious situation happens like i gotta come in with the jokes right away so i was thinking about it yesterday and the first joke i came up with was i'm surprised that he you know like domestic violence happened because you'd think his girlfriend slash wife would just run right past him right. you know what i mean yes yes <laughs> I, I i heard similar ones you know i heard yeah, like for sure. where's cam sutton he's 15 yards behind the uh behind the receiver or uh <laughs> he fell down <laughs> that guy would always fucking fall down you like he, he, he's about to be 15 yards behind the bars. You know what I mean? Uh oh, look at that. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. So in the last uh, week, what uh, what have you been up to? What what do you want to talk about in addition to what we already mentioned? Yeah, Zane, we got to do the. I got to pull up the classic. Now that we're getting back into, we moved to 11 a.m., but the the text still come through great. You said. Yo, tomorrow I'm doing a tribute to guys who watch their wives get their snatches eaten out by dogs. You down? <laughs> and I said, LMAO, hell yeah. And I said, 11 question mark. And you said, is that okay? And I said, hell yeah, baby. That's a good combo, dude. Here we are. Isn't that great? Yeah, I try to really amp it up. I've, uh, I've, I've tried to say the grossest, most heinous thing. Do you read those to your wife? Uh, I do not, um, but <laughs> if I did, she would laugh. She's got a good sense of humor. 
But yeah, you know what? I've been I've been hearing. Is there is this like a big news story? I feel like I've been hearing about like people getting busted for their dogs, like doing stuff to them. Is is are you referring to a specific no, story? No, no, it's just something that popped into my brain because Diana said she wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Um, no, seriously, I've been reading about that. I swear there's like somebody who's like um, like 15 minutes of fame right now because they got busted for their dog. I'm pr- like either boning them or fucking doing that. So I don't know. I-, I thought you were like referring to what the fuck's going on in society right now. Yeah, I-, I-, I can say that if I was a single woman, I would definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, they well, okay, I, I, we can't keep going with this, but I was going to say, like, I think it's like pretty common knowledge that dogs have cleaner mouths than people, but I don't no, know if that's true that's all the true. time. It's not true at all. <laughs> that's not true. Especially, especially my dog. O'Neill eats poop, for God's sake. Yeah, okay, yeah, once the poop gets going, yeah, you, you know, that, then we're getting rough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so what else is going on? So, yeah, so I just, I got I to gotta fucking, um, Eric saying the, uh, I don't know if I talked about this last. Did I talk to you about uh, uh, Jameson going to preschool? I don't think so. Unless yeah, I forgot. Little, this little fucking guy. So um, so his cousin, who's a year older, um, is, of course, like getting ready to go to preschool and getting all prepped up for that crap and stuff. So anyways, um, my wife and um, her sister-in-law or whatever her brother's wife is called, um, they like came up with this plan, like, oh, we'll just fucking, we'll send JMO too. Like JMO can, a year early, we'll just send his ass to preschool with the regular age kids. And we're, and so I was like, I mean, do we want to do that? But um, it's it's not really like a preschool. It's kind of like a, I don't really know what the fuck's going on there. Early, early anyways, learners, yeah. I know, I know what you're talking about. It's like, they, it's basically another way to get the kids out of your parents' hair. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, well, except for like he's like young, like, he's like younger. You know what I mean? So like, I'm I'm, I'm always I'm like worried because he's like freaked out a little bit, as, as you can imagine. I'm like, yeah, little fucker. He's like not like prepared for this. You know no, what I mean? Yeah, he's I like, guess. I'm supposed to be fucking forward. But anyways, um, yeah, we've been going. He went. He's today was his third time going, and he's fucking. It's just been well, you know what I mean? Like Blue's going through some some emotions about okay. it, of course, yeah. you know. And yeah. he's he's flipping out. He's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. So we, we've been going through it the past the past week or so, dude. Okay, so there's a little stress. Mommy's got that because she's been with him for so long, and the kid not being with mom is stressed because he's been with mommy for that long. It's it's one of those deals, right? Yeah, so he does. So um, I consider it like uh, like when you're that young, you kind of like your personality would just like go back and forth between your mom and your dad. Yeah. So uh, so she's the emotional one. So he he will get um, he will like like her she will come out of him and like he will just be emotional as hell but then he'll switch back right and then he'll yeah. turn into me right so this, this last this last time he was there the teacher told us that um he uh was he was crying and like flipping out or whatever and making a scene before he went in yeah but yeah the teacher the teacher says he walks in and like stops crying and like sits down at like the circle they were forming and he just said out loud to everybody okay i'm ready to be happy now yeah. and i'm like yeah, oh, yeah that's my fucking guy right yeah, there. yeah. he's getting it he's getting it. It, it it's your wife that you want to watch out for because <laughs> yeah, you for know sure. sometimes they like flip out and you might come home and like your kid might be drowned <laughs> it happens dude <laughs> yeah keep her away from him from now on until she's <laughs> until she's done with that shit you don't want to you know she it's, it's, sometimes moms crack and yeah uh, for sure dude. Uh, that's 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 you want to keep an eye on her she might completely lose her shit so yeah i like uh, how you i like how you worded that like you might just come home and the kids drown oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's it, seriously you know i mean last thing you don't i mean you don't want that to happen so uh, make sure you like, uh, you know, from now on, she's not allowed to be alone with Jameson. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you this little story about it too, because um, I know usually I'm talking about like you know railing pussy and fucking butt sex, you know crazy shit like that. But I gotta tell you a cute, I gotta tell you a cute fucking story, Eric Zane, that like yeah, all the sure the, the lady, the ladies, their hearts are gonna melt, and even the guys' hearts are gonna oh, melt. Oh, I believe right? it. I believe it. So fucking um, yeah, I'm like. Uh, 
just, you know, kind of a weird dude or you know how I am or yeah, whatever. So I'm not like, uh, I'm not like super emotional at all. But, um, so I had like, I may, maybe like one of those first like dad, like dad moments where you uh-huh. have, where you're like so overfilled with like some sort of emotion that like you almost cry, but you're laughing. You know what I'm talking about? I do. I've, uh, I, I know both the laughing and I know the crying too. Yeah. So, so, uh, JMO came home the other day with, uh, like just I don't know like a like a progress report like a little sheet of paper about what they did that day or whatever okay. and I don't know what the fu- they were doing something with airplanes so it was all centered around airplanes but anyways he made like a little craft like a little airplane paper airplane type thing yeah anyways so on the sheet of paper um because Blue sent it to me on the bottom it said what is one thing Jay or he wanted us to know about the day and it's, it's, he, he told her to write down like he was he was really excited to show his craft to dad oh. and like. So I'm reading it, right? So, so like, she sends me the picture, and it's like the, it's like the bottom of the paper. So I'm like reading all through it. And I'm like, okay, it's all about airplanes. I don't know why you're fucking sending me this. And then I saw the bottom part, and I did that, dude. I was like, I was like laughing and like just trying to fucking hold it together, dude. Because oh. I was like, I was like, that's no fucking cute, dude. Like, yeah, he, that he, is. He, I'm, not, I'm not even there. He's just telling strangers, like, I want to show my dad. I'm I like, know oh. it. I know it. And that's a good thing that they tipped you off. Um, yeah, for sure. because if you didn't know that, you know, and he showed you the stupid thing or whatever the fuck it is. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it looks great or whatever. If you didn't, yeah. you know, he's got to, he's got immediately, you're going to turn him into a, a serial killer. He's going to start killing cats. And then, you know, in five years, he'll be killing the, the whole neighborhood. No, right. I, I, Dan, look at my airplane. I'm like, yeah, sweet. Get a fucking job. Dude. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's really cool. I, um, uh, you know, eventually you're gonna uh, you're gonna hate him, and he's gonna hate you. So live it up, you know. Because yeah, yeah I know. I, I straight up think about it all the time. Oh, they're they're all assholes. They all become assholes, um, and that's a bad bad feeling. You know, the cops have to uh, you af- after he gets busted for shoplifting or. You know, right. maybe, maybe <laughs> knock somebody up. It's it's fucking terrible. So uh, yeah, <laughs> enjoy it right now because it's really going to be bad and and it it's it's going to be ugly. So do you need you need to wrap your mind around that. This is all temporary. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I do it all the fucking time, dude. Yeah. <laughs> because even now, I mean, there's always something fucked up going down, and somebody's just acting like an asshole, and and then they hate you, and then you just got to keep your mouth shut, and you wish you could punch them in the face, but you can't. Right, for sure. Oh, God, it's the worst. Uh, so, yeah, live it up. Live it up. I'm glad that, that you're experiencing those good days, though. Yeah, I'm living it up. Uh, my, my first roadblock is going to be when, like, he like actually has to go to school, like, full-time and stuff, and then I got to fucking like meet other people, like meet other adults and shit. Like, I don't want right. to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to fucking like do small talk with other parents of kids. I mean, get the fuck out of my face. You yeah. know, I, th- I think you got to look always big picture. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think you got to look at the big hitters that can slow a young person down when it comes to being a productive adult. So what I'm telling you is buy him lots of rubbers. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, we, we, yeah. I can't deal with no teen pregnancy yeah. in my fucking house. Say, you, yeah. say you got two options: rubbers or put it in her butt. You got to. <laughs> that's what Straight you got to do. Jamo. I'll tell him at his next birthday. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my god. So, all right. There's that. That's that's incredible to hear you going through the through the stages of life, and uh, as as the son, as your son grows, you need more kids though. To really fuck you up, though. I mean, I, I know, right? Just turn me into a complete yeah. psychopath. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've like talked like about ev- it. Every two years, there should be a new kid that we can that we can be talking about, and I and then we, it, everything's going to be a disaster, and we can share it with the audience, please. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> as long as it's for the laws. Yes, of course. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's great. Anything to conclude? I love you sharing those personal stories. Um, no, dude, not, nothing really fucking happened this week, dude. It's been a pretty chill week, except for the fucking, the weather. Actually, I will tell you, it was, it was wild. Uh, yesterday, um, I look, it, this is wild. Like I walked by a door to outside yesterday and it was sunny. And then I kid you not, 30 seconds later, I walked by that same door and it was a whiteout outside and I'm in Wyoming. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? dude? Yeah. Then I went back into my office and then I came back out about 30 seconds later and it was sunny again, dude. That was wild. I'll yeah, tell you that. It has been like that for several days now. This, 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 um, 
you know, schizophrenic type of day, back and forth, sunny, then windy and cold and snow. It's so terrible. It's fucking the worst. Yeah, I, I ain't going to stand for it, Eric. Saying. I think we're getting, <laughs> I, hey, and I think we're getting hammered tomorrow. I think we're going to get some snow. Yeah, dude, we're getting fucking. Actually, they had a pretty good little skit this morning on uh, uh, 96.9 when I was driving in. Yeah. Um, they were talking about how fucking, it, like, it's going to be snowing. But somehow they started talking about Travis Bone and his wife at the same time. What? And then, uh, and, yeah, and then Greg was like, he's like, all right. You know, they were, like, trying to go to commercial. He's like, all right. He's like, tomorrow there's going to be three to six inches, but not in Travis's bedroom. And it was so fucking funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I love those folks. Um, yeah, good peeps. Yeah, man. All right. Um, I appreciate you as always, and thank you for joining us. Oh, fuck, us. Eric Zane. I'm just thinking about this. I'm going to have to fuck it. I got to start. Okay, I'm, I'm dumb. I shouldn't have said that. I got to start listening to you in the mornings. My bad, dude. No, you didn't. I had to remind you that, that not everybody gets it right away. No. Yeah, I, I got to fuck I, it. It's, it's my new thing. That's a thing. If you, you, You'll end up giving up on 96.9 because you've heard all that goddamn music. The one thing about 100.3... Um, Q100 is it's you may not know all the music but you'll know the artist and it's very interesting because you're just hearing shit that you've never heard before so if that's yeah, hell thing, yeah. I'm all about that all right get fucked I appreciate you and uh, I'll talk to you soon all right love you guys Deuces. there you go that's uh, Kyle from dumpster divers or a company that used to market themselves on uh, on the podcast I'm hoping he starts up again I don't know if he will I hope he does but even when that stopped, I was like, you know, everybody loves him. He has to be part of the show. I, I need a life with him in it. That's what I need. Okay. A little bit different because at this time of the day, not only have I drank my coffee, but I've drank my water. So I hate to do this to you, but I got to pee again. I have to go tinkle again. Stick with me. I'll be back. Cow fade. Uh, I was talking with you about how the last two days starting to do the radio show, there was a catastrophe. Now, I did not have a catastrophe today. Um, the show started at the time that it is supposed to start. However, uh, that was because we decided to actually test it to make sure that things were right, which seems like we would have done that initially, but for whatever reason, we didn't. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, the radio show was supposed to start and uh, I start talking, start playing the music, nothing, nothing at all. And it was something, first day I didn't have a volume up. Second day, I didn't have a button pushed. So today it's like, all right, easy. At 5.30, show starts at 6. At 5.30, we're going to test it. So what that, now, just so you know, where I sit, I have an entirely separate computer with all of the, uh, things that I need that when I hit a song, it goes out over the radio. And there is an identical computer in Grayling, Michigan. The Grayling one is in control up until 6 a.m. And then my computer takes over. And my setup. It's like it hands it off to me. So I have on the phone this dude, JJ, who's manning that system. He goes, okay, easy. Play a song on your end, and I'll hit the button, and then it'll change over for just a second to make sure that it's playing your songs. You get me? And I'm listening to it through it, this little speaker I have here. And uh, there it is. And uh, so I can hear, like, ACDC, and then I play mine, and then he goes, okay, I'm going to change it over. And then I would then hear, like, whatever song I was playing. Alice Cooper. So here ACDC, he hits a button to change it over to test it for just, and it's silence. And he puts it back on his ACDC and he says, uh, yeah, I didn't hear anything. I go, okay, yeah, it, it's looking good. And he's thinking to himself, well, yeah, that's what you said to me the last two days, but something's been fucked up. So I'm looking and the two things that, fuck me up last two days are not like that the volume is up the button is pushed i'm like i don't know and so he's just waiting there and like it was like for 20 minutes we're having a stare down and um i said all right let's do another test instead of playing music through the computer 
let me just say check, check into the mic. So he flips it over and I say check, check. And I can hear myself coming through that speaker. So I, what that tells me is everything that's right here is in fact going over there. But that computer is not. So my microphone is working. My console is working. All the equipment is working except for the computer that plays the music. Now he's like, okay, maybe it does have something to do with something that is not your fault, EZ. So I was like, okay, thank God, the the vindication. And then literally he goes, try it again. And I tried it again, and then it worked. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it happened, but it's fucking nuts. And that was with three minutes to uh, to spare. It was uh, 25 minutes of figuring this shit out, and then the show started on time. Uh, right at 6 a.m. So, all right. Now, all of this is temporary. I will have a dedicated phone line that people can call in on, on the show. And I can record the phone calls and have conversations with people and all that stuff. And I ordered this new console with, it's actually like a radio station console I bought. And I will be retiring my podcast board which has served me so well uh, for j- over five years and two months. All right? And uh, so this will be a big day. And then Dave Grant comes back in, rewires all this shit. Because right now, it is pieced together. Like you wouldn't believe. In fact, there's a piece of equipment um, that when we set this up last Friday, they, they brought this thing in and it didn't work. So Dave Grant had to go and uh, uh, lift one from one of his radio stations. So I've got all I've got all sorts of shit going on here to make this happen. You wouldn't believe it. And um, I'm just shocked that we've been able to pull it off, considering what we have to work with here. And it, it sounds good, I guess, when I'm not screwing shit up. Chris in Buffalo says, can I call and talk to Thiefel? Ryan says, it can go to the fear bunker. Good point. That's exactly what I'm what I'm going to do is bring that up to uh, Fear Bunker North, and uh, and do that. Uh, speaking of Chris, Chris in Buffalo sent me a new intro for Who Are These Zanes, and I'm going to play it for you right now. Chris is um is is really good at this. He has uh. He does like intros for who are these free beers and who are these Zanes and and he takes various snippets from those shows and uh, we have fun at my expense. So this is the latest intro from Chris. Tune man, rocking and rolling, you. Yes, we are loud and clear and live as hell, man. Live as hell. We're live man. as hell. Rock and roll karaoke. Why did I say karaoke? Shut up, bitch. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> what the fuck, Ben? Tripping over my tongue. Hey, faithful. We're gonna have jerky all over our face, man. You'll want to get drenched by this storm. Chapel. Dusty way. There's more to come. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a <laughs> lot more to come. Who are these oh, Chris, thank you. Now, baby, like a dog in heat. Thank you, buddy. Uh, so, new episode on that comes out on Saturday live. Okay? You can see it live. And there's some real advantages to being tier two. Not only can you see it, you get it before the folks on tier one. Uh, tier one is just audio. Because then I got to take the audio, I got to edit it, I got to clean it up. Usually it's available the next day or the day after that sometimes. So if you want it, the day it happens live and you can comment on it. People are joking about it, having having discussions about this shit. Um, All good. If not, that's cool too. Okay. Let's see. I need to... We need to get into this story. I, I, I just, I don't understand the concept of how people can, uh, sc- 
I don't understand the concept of how people can squat in homes. So let's say you own a house and it's vacant and you're going to sell it, or maybe you're going to put a renter in it or something like that. If a person makes their way into the house, oops, I don't know what the hell just happened there. If a person makes their way into your house and, and just lives there, they can actually live there. They, they can squat inside of your house. I don't understand how it happens, but it does. And that's going on right now in a Queens, New York neighborhood. Old neighborhood. People have lived there for years. And this one lady's got a, a, a rental house or a vacant home that she's going to sell. And then she discovers that there's people that are living in the home. Now, you would think that all you would need to do is tell the cops that there's an intruder in your home. They, they pull the person out. They beat the fuck out of them. And then they arrest them. But that's not the case. Uh, even in Michigan, uh, there's there's rights that a squatter has who goes into your home and lives there. And I, I can't wrap my mind around the concept of that. Um, I mean, like if I'm in my home and someone tries coming in my house, I can shoot him. But if I'm outside of my home and someone's in my home, I can get in trouble by trying to have them removed. And that's happening right now in this neighborhood in Queens. In fact, the homeowner was arrested for trying to get these assholes out of her home. And it was caught on camera as the local news station was doing a story reporting on it. They just, they just happened to be there. Uh, at the time, audio check, video check. I don't know the law. Yeah, there's laws. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. How about that? A squatter standoff. A property owner confronts a group of people she says moved into her million dollar home in Queens, and our cameras were rolling as dozens of officers showed up. Several people were taken away in handcuffs, and one of those arrested may surprise you. Investigative reporter Dan Krauth joins us now with more on what happened. Tell us, Dan. Well, this is a very Hello, big Dad. growing problem. I received dozens of tips from viewers about this in just the past week. I went to do what I thought was going to be a routine interview. Instead, we capture what police and property owners are dealing with on a daily basis. I have video of you. Who are these people? Out the situation. Yeah, but they're House, man. Relax. No, 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 no. To understand how this day ended, we need the police right away. With multiple 911 calls and arrests, we have to start at the beginning. Adele, the hardest question is how do you say your name? We met Adele <laughs> and Deloro outside the home her parents left her in Flushing, Queens. She's in the process of selling it. No, he left. I know what you're thinking. Million dollar home? That's a million. Well, there, that's a million dollar home. Everything's more expensive there. But she's been locked out. She claims squatters moved in on February 6 and refused to leave. What's it like being here knowing you can't go inside of your own home? It's enraging. It really is. In New York, squatters have, have rights after 30 days. By the time that someone does their investigation and they do their work. She, no, she, that, that's her property that she's trying to sell. And for whatever reason, she didn't go back to the home, which is fine. Who gives a shit? But in New York, if you're in a house for 30 days, they have rights. And their job will be well over the 30 days, and this man will have stolen my home, and now she's back. Just after wrapping up our interview, a woman showed up. What are you doing in the house? Are you renting this house? I'm still renting. Why are you here? She unlocked the front door, saw our cameras, and took off. It's open. Let's go in the house. It's open. Adele and her daughter, with the property deed in hand, went inside. This is my furniture. These are my curtains. She didn't just find her belongings inside. There's a man sleeping right there. Get out of my house. <laughs> she found two men. How long have you lived here? I moved in about... There's the, here's the curtains. Here's my furniture. There's a guy sleeping. Two days ago. They've called the police on me, and I've called the locksmiths. I didn't come in illegally. The door was open. Police started interviewing neighbors and looking for documents. Do you have something that shows that you've been here for more than 30 days? They took the man who told me he had been renting for two days out in handcuffs. They got one out. And escorted the other guy off the property. Now you're afraid to come out. I'm not coming out. This house is empty. This is my home. My locksmith is on the corner waiting to change my locks. And that's not fair. It's not fair that I as the homeowner should be having to go through this. How you doing? Minutes later, a locksmith <laughs> showed up. But police gave her a warning 
before they left. I may end up in handcuffs today if this man shows up here and says that I have illegally evicted him. I said to them, let him take me to court the way I've been told to take him to court. But today, I'm not leaving my house. Less than 10 minutes after police left and the locks were changed. The man who claims to be the one actually leasing the house shows up. Call the police again. With the other guy, police took off the property. Do you see this? This guy just literally broke down my door, broke through myself and my daughter to get in here. This guy just forced himself into my house. No, he did not. Yes, he did. No, he did. And he so did you. Man. You broke through the front door. Officer. The man called the police on her. So why is it that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically he can't be kicked out. He needs to go to court. They consider this a landlord-tenant issue. Oh my and by God. law, it has to be handled through the housing court, <laughs> not with police. If you own this house, you would not want I her inside. I don't own the house. I don't own this. Exactly, yes. she does. Yes, but then once again, you should know how law works. I and do know how it there's, works. There's rules to the as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. He says he signed a lease in October, but wouldn't tell us with who. I got proof longer than that. Show us the proof. But who are you for me to show? I showed it to cops. Dan with Channel 7 News. If you don't want to show it, you don't want to show, show it. Proof. Come here, brother. I like that. I, I, would, I would like to see it. He didn't show me a lease. This, this is, is a bill. Is a bill for work he says he had done to the house. He didn't show police a lease either. The police department doesn't have the lease? No. He's got no documentation. Just bills. So Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For ah! what? <laughs> oh my God! For being, in my, house, for being in my own home. And, it's not, it's not and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Arrested for unlawful eviction. Wow. She changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. So how does this all end then? When do you the, leave? The way it ends is, is either she pays me my money that I put into the house, pay me the money, and I'll leave, or send me to court, and we deal with the judge in court. It's that simple. Hmm. It's not that simple. It's a long process. Evictions can take close to two years to complete. Wow. Jesus. Uh, I mentioned this on the radio show, <clears throat> this exact story, and <laughs> I thought, can you imagine in northern Michigan if someone tried to do that? If someone decided to move, okay, let's say... Um, like up north at Fear Bunker North, if I went there and there's a squatter in there, all I would need to do is get in my truck and I'd go over to my neighbor across the way, who's a goddamn hillbilly, down the street to Kathy, she's a hillbilly, up the road, Bosco, the guy's name is actually Bosco. Hey, Bosco, you won't believe this shit. And I'd explain to him, and then they're going to get their guns and get in the back of my truck. And they're going to take care of this so goddamn fast. And the cops are going to be like, make sure you record it so we can laugh about it later. That does not happen up north. No, 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 no. There, there, there's none of that. Uh, Nick says, get the gas. Bob says the house is going to get struck by Jewish lightning, which I heard for the first time on this show. I think it was Nick who said Jewish lightning. <laughs> Holy fuck. I cannot believe that shit. Uh, Tofa says he broke the fuck in. No lease, no nothing. And because of loopholes. Oh, man, I fucking want to punch people so hard. Asshole of the day or squatters, David says. Uh, Chris says squatters would be buried in the woods somewhere if they tried that up north. Ryan says crazy that cops won't recognize that that dude is not a legal tenant. And in fact, it should be considered breaking and entering. Jesus. Insanity. Jesse says pisses me off and it's not even my problem. God damn, Molly, total scum, not on the lease, not a damn resident. I think Molly's pretty new. I've seen Molly in here before, but I don't think I know you. I think I want to, though. I always want to know who the people are, you know, who I'm actually speaking to. Uh, how did you get here? 
How long have you been here? How did you find out? Why? why how come suddenly you got in here? I, I, I need to know the story, the history of you. And if anybody else, if I have not figured out your history, please send me an email so I can correspond with you. Eric at EricZaneShow.com. If you don't want me to know who you are, make a fake account that way so I can correspond with you. I, I, I just like to know who is here. Thank you to Bleeding Heart Brian on Patreon, by the way. He uh, sent me a text and said, easy, you forgot to post a Patreon again. And sometimes I'll be in here, I'll get it all ready to go. And then I won't hit the publish button. And sure enough, I was at Bosco's uh, assembling hamburgers. And um, he sent me a text. And I, I went into the phone and was able to publish it that way. So if you ever, if it ever gets past like 3 or 4 o'clock, text me. Because I've, I've fucked something up. That's how uh, easy it is to reach me. You can even reach me through uh, the email, Facebook Messenger, or the app. You can, uh, through the uh, Patreon app, you can reach out to me. And I get them all. I always respond. I'm good about that. Oh, my God. That story pisses me off so fucking bad. Uh, Molly says, I am newish. Linda says, welcome to you, Molly. Ryan says, get a seven-day free trial on Patreon and join us Saturday for Ben and Eric on Zoom. Oh, that's nice, too. I love those seven-day free trials. Those work well for people. I, I mean, I get a, I've gotten so many people who just sign up, and then I tell them to cancel it. I see them cancel it, and then right after the seven days expires, they sign up. Like, legit. Like a transaction. Paying for it. It's so perfect. Really worked out well for your old pal, Easy. Um, okay. Let's see here. Nothing more from Justin. We uh, talked about Cam Sutton, the Lions cornerback, with um, oops, our pal Kyle. This is him right there. He's uh, been arrested or not arrested yet, but he's wanted. They they say he strangled his significant other. Uh, if he did not do it, evading arrest or evading the police is, is not going to help your cause. This actually might work out for the Lions because they signed him and he was no good last year, but he's got a contract. So I, I suspect that if he did do something terrible, uh, the Lions would be able to release him and not have to honor that money, and that would free up. Eh, it's crazy. Freeing up cap space because of a horrible thing that someone did. They said he may be driving a um, grand Jeep Grand Wagoneer with Florida license plates. They'll find him soon enough. All right. By the way, for the um, the house squatting story, there was something else that um, she sent a couple of vigilantes over to get the people out of the house, and it didn't work. That part wasn't included in the story. It's kind of like uh, just part of it. Um, all right. Locally, years ago, some lady was killed by some guy, was murdered, and... Uh, the confessed killer got out. He was paroled. Can you imagine being family members of the victim? And they say, yeah, uh, so-and-so made parole. We're letting him out. That just happened. And the guy tried immediately to get like uh, to blend in with society by getting a gig as a rideshare operator. Audio check, video check. A rolled killer who confessed to the serial rapes and murders of three young women in Kalamazoo County in the 1970s is looking for a new job after the state says it shut down his private transportation service. Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker spoke with the convicted killer and the sister of one of his victims. 
For the family of one of the victims, the latest development raises more questions about the state's handling of Brett Costa's release from the start. Lori Lack was 10 years old when Brett Coster and Danny Raines raped and murdered her sister Pamela Fearnow in 1972. Her sister was just about to start her sophomore year at Western Michigan University. I was the bratty little sister. She was nine years older than me. Um, she was very fun loving. It was very hard for me. It made me think that I might not live till I was over 18, uh, it made me afraid. Coster, just 15, and Reigns, then in his late 20s, also killed two young women from Chicago who had stopped at a Kalamazoo gas station on their way to Ann Arbor. Reigns, who killed a fourth woman by himself, was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Coster, who testified against Reigns, pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and got life. He served 48 years before the parole board released him in January 2021. Fear Now sister says she is still angry that the state never notified her family about the parole hearing. She says she would have argued to keep him locked up. I would have wanted to go. I would have wanted to tell them um, that I feel robbed of being able to know my sister as an adult. She was robbed of her future. She was robbed of any having children. Anytime you have a parole board hearing like this, I think that you should have a family member actually on the parole board or part of it. The fact that they didn't even reach out to her and say, hey, we're thinking about paroling him. He's got a parole hearing is remarkable. Family. Then she recently learned that Coster, now living in Battle Creek, had started a business providing rides in his car. I'm not sure how the state of Michigan... Gave him a chauffeur's license. Records show the Michigan Secretary of State issued him a chauffeur's license in December 2023. If you're giving rides to people, men, women, and you know these where they live, I mean, that's kind of eerie to me. Be knowing that he had, you know, killed three women, raped and killed three. I, I would be afraid that he would do it again. Smokes. The fact that he's he's giving rides to people, um, I mean, he, he, at the very least, he should have to have on his car that he's killed three people. For the State Department of Corrections says it learned about the new business venture through social media and immediately told him to stop. Quote, his parole agent met directly with Coster after becoming aware to make clear that he cannot provide rides or engage in similar work with the public. Does he deserve a chance? Well, selfishly, he killed my sister. No, I don't think he deserves, deserves a chance. But yet, uh, part of me says, well, forgiveness. Okay, I'll say this. Um, I mean, I can't, I've, I've not walked in her shoes, I can't say. But I think it's important that she at least hear him. Okay? Does he seem, you know, like a different person. I mean, and, and, and let your own instincts tell you not that that is the, the end all, you know, um, I, I think that she should be part of the process. And, and if, and I think that if she says, you know, I'm, I'm really not comfortable with them being out in the public. Well, I mean, that's, that's the way it goes. Then too bad for that fucker. He shouldn't have killed somebody. Um, but I do feel that, you know, a job chauffeuring people around is not a good idea. Oh, Ken Coker's going to bang on the door. We spoke briefly to Coster today through his apartment door. How are you supposed to make a living? I mean, that's the question. I'm trying to figure that out now. Thanks for stopping by. Ken Coker reporting. The victim's sister also questioning why Coster isn't on the sex offender registry since he admitted to raping and killing three women. But the state says that because he pleaded guilty to second degree. I know a guy who's on the radio for six months who's not on the sex offender registry somehow. Murder and not to a rape charge. He doesn't qualify. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, absolutely nuts. Victim rights, victims rights advocates will have a field day with this one. That guy shouldn't be, uh, he shouldn't even be out of prison for fuck's sake. That's ridiculous. Come on now. Uh, kill three women, get out of jail free after 48 years. What a fucking joke. 
That's what Rebecca says. Or that's what Ryan says. Rebe Rebecca says he needs to be in jail for the rest of his life. He killed three women. Uh, Chris says forgiveness is one thing. Doesn't mean he gets to be a normal part of society, though. Um, if you get an OUI, you can't drive people. Kill three people, you can drive. God damn. I don't know. That's remarkable to me. Cole writes, who gives a shit how he's supposed to make a living? He shouldn't have to worry about it because he should still be in prison. I don't know. Um, yeah, he should definitely still be in prison. Part of me wants people who do shit like that. I mean, if you're 100% sure, because you hear all the time about people who are wrongfully convicted of uh, life, uh, lifetime penalty crimes, like uh, uh, murder, whatever, um, who, who didn't actually do it. That actually happens. But we should have our system where we're, um, we're a little bit cavemanish, where um, it's, it's not the way the legal system works now. I think we need to put a um, a bit of importance on the whole concept of if someone like this does something like that and you're 1 million percent positive, like you've got them actually doing it or admitting to it and giving you the details and telling you things that where the bodies are, only they would know. You should be able to just kill them right after the trial. I mean, who gives a shit? That's what I think should happen. Jimmy writes he should be a girls volleyball coach. God damn it, Jimmy. What the fuck is wrong with you? All right. We have to name the asshole of the day. What is that guy's name? He's going to be the asshole of the day. Um, that would be... Let's see. Brent Coster will be your asshole of the day. Before we get to that, though, which is pretty much a foregone conclusion, uh, thank you to Joe Martinez from A&E Heating and Cooling, 616-516-8579. I'm reminding you to call Joe and get on the books, on the schedule, for getting that AC tuned up. All right. I know with tomorrow's snowfall, you won't be thinking about it because we're going to get some snow around here. Uh, but definitely keep it in mind that uh, that day is coming when we will be turning on the AC. Don't just flip it on without getting it checked, for God's sake. 616-516-8579 for A and E, heating and cooling. Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV with this show. Is uh, has been had as a sponsor for quite some time. Thank you so much. 616-532-6600. Get your vehicles repaired at Irvine's. Trusted shop in West Michigan. Uh, with probably the nicest waiting area you'll ever see. They recently expanded the business. I'm so proud of them. And uh, they include the world's greatest coffee maker right there. Get into a car, a uh, rental car, while your vehicle is be being repaired. Any type of combustion motor, any type of uh, hybrid or EV, even the dealers take the cars that they can't fix to Irvine. 616-532-6600, located right in the middle of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, find them online at ervines.com. That's ervines.com. And then Green Medicine Shop. I love these folks so much as I do all my sponsors, Shawnee and Matt. Kind of like the uh, new kids on the block when it comes to sponsorship on the show. If you partake and enjoy cannabis, uh, you know, Michigan is a recreational marijuana state. However, these folks love the community of Greenville, Michigan, so they opened up shop there. But the city ordinance prevents them from having a recreational facility. They said, no matter. Uh, we are going to produce, help produce and sell high-quality cannabis under the medicinal umbrella and people love it uh really really great rave reviews about green medicine shop uh cleaner cleaner marijuana cannabis less yeast uh, less mold 
and um, just a cleaner draw when you you know rip that thing, whatever it may be, whether you smoke it in a. I know you can smoke it in a bong or a bowl, or you actually like roll a joint. It all seems crazy to me. I wouldn't do any of this, but I know you. I know everybody loves smoking pot now. Everywhere you turn, everybody's high in Michigan. This is such a green state now. So I want you to get high after you buy cannabis or gummies or edibles uh, from Green Medicine Shop in Greenville, Michigan. All right? Get stoned to the bone with their pot. Since it's medicinal, you don't pay the 10% excise tax. Uh, You need a med card to do it. You can get it on their website cost 90 bucks you can get it in like 15 minutes 20 minutes depending on how busy they are and uh, you got to do that online some people do it out in the parking lot they pay the 90 bucks and then they come in they get a 100 in-store credit so that's free and then some uh so do it go to greenville michigan to green medicine shop and that's where you buy your cannabis all right this is my fourth day of doing this show at this time Uh, I think this is probably the most comfortable I've felt doing the show. I'm starting to feel like myself again with you. I was a little bit out of sorts the first few days, but I think I'm I'm feeling better now. Uh, Molly says, for MedCard, you don't need a doctor to approve you for it. No, you do. And that's what you do. uh, Let me me show you again. You may may not have seen this before. You are getting a doctor to do this. show you how it how it goes the green okay so are you 18 and over yes and you hold a valid medical card no so you go here get a medical card by the way if you want to smoke or take gummies eat gummies or edibles whatever the fuck and you're under 21 in michigan it doesn't matter You cannot consume recreationally if you're under 21 in Michigan. However, if you get a medical card and you're 18 and over, you can, you have the right to consume this as much as you want. So when you click on get a medical card, you fill out the quick intake form below, submit a payment with the 90 bucks, and then you're in the virtual waiting room. You're going to get your phone's going to light up and the doc's going to go, oh, hey, here you go. What's your malady? And you tell them. uh, And then that's it. Look, provider history, all this shit. Are you receiving? If you just answer all these honestly, and and then uh, you might have to check one of these boxes. um, That's all the doc needs to sign off on your prescription. And then you're done. You pay the 90. You're going to get a number at the end of this process and they'll mail you the card, but that number is all they need inside of green medical green medicine shop so that you can buy whatever you want to burn. And that's it. It's completely legal. There's also uh, legal benefits to smoking when you have a med card. Like um, I think it has to do like with an employer. If an employer finds out that you're burning And they say, yeah, we got a policy. You say, fuck you. I got my medical card. I can still get stoned after work. You can't tell me what to do. Go fuck yourself. All right. So that's uh, that's how you do that, Molly. I love that name, Molly. I've got a crush on the name Molly. I know that sounds weird, but I'm kind of weird. Ryan writes, let us not forget today's great advice. From a guy who used to advertise on the show. Quote, fucking pussy and butt sex. Ryan adds, can even an ex-con get their med card? Doc, what's your malady? Ugly old paroled fuck. I murdered three girls and now they fired me from my Uber job for some reason. Your asshole of the day is Brent Coster. The guy who murdered three people. Congrats to Brent. That guy should still be in prison. 
And he raped people too. Women. He raped women and then murdered them. What the fuck? Why can't you just behave like the rest of us, you sick fucking bastard? That is my time today. Show is now done. I'm going to hit end. I'm going to go potty. And then I'm going to do all what I need to do to get the Patreon going. I think I can be starting by 12.15. I'll talk to you then on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Eric Zay. Thank you for being here. Until next time, bye-bye.